Suzette Sonata, and I'm the executive director for the Thompson Caribou Rural and, um, Programs and Hospitals. I'm Barbara Roden, and I am the mayor of the village of Ashcroft. Um, good afternoon. I'm Jackie Taggart, and I'm the MLA for Fraser Nicola. What is the area that the hospital is supposed to serve? How does that compare to other areas in the interior health mandate? So Ashcroft, while it's the hospital is in the community, we also have Clinton Cash Creek. We have a number of areas around that the Ashcroft Hospital is responsible for serving. Um, that's not different than many smaller community hospitals where there's a local base in the hospital service or the community health services and it serves a larger catchment area. Uh, potentially I've heard the number about 9,000 people and that's up and down pretty much the, the Highway 97, Highway 1 corridor and then a little bit to the east and to the west so we do know that there are people from for example the Cherry Creek area and Wallachine who come into Ashcroft to, uh, to access the health site here? Well, I look at a very um, sort of high level around health care. Um, and we know that the Ashcroft Health Site uh, services not only Ashcroft Cash Creek area, but the area surrounding south to uh, Spences Bridge. We also have the Highway 1 uh, corridor that it serves and north to Clinton. So quite a large area, population probably quite sparse but um, not to say that it's not a, a critical uh, health site in the region. Is Lillooet emergency open 24 hours? If so, what makes the situation in Lillooet different from Ashcroft? Additionally, in comparison, what does Lytton Health Services situation look like? I, as I said, I work at a fairly high level. So, um, I know that the uh, Lillooet area, when we talk about healthcare, is very different than talking about it in the Ashcroft area. Lillooet seems to have the ability to keep uh, doctors, and they're very, very fortunate around that. Uh, Lillooet is that little bit more isolated, off the uh, beaten track, um, that much further away from Kamloops, and so it is a significant health site for the Lillooet, Goldbridge, Braylorn area. And um, as a result, they have had consistent uh, doctors and staffing and have been able to even run some surgeries and have a consistent ER. So Lillooet is a little bit different because of their location. The Lytton area has also been very fortunate to have consistent, uh, a consistent doctor in the area. Who, um, whose family seems to very much enjoy, um, you know, the, the Lytton area. And so I think that that consistency of staff is so critically important. Ashcroft has seen uh, doctors come and go over the last 10 to 15 years, and it's that lack of consistency that we're, we're struggling with. For the Lillooet uh, question, yes, Lillooet Emergency Department is open 24-7. Um, talking to the former mayor of Lillooet, uh, Marg Lampman, uh, they have had for a number of years now a stable team of doctors there in Lillooet who really like the lifestyle, really like the community, and so that has in part enabled them to keep a 24-7 emergency department. However, the last time I spoke to uh, Mayor Lampman was last year, and she indicated that they were starting to face the fact that some of these doctors are now getting close to retirement age. So she indicated that they were concerned they would be facing the same issue that so many other communities are, which is um, trying to recruit more physicians to the community. Now you asked about uh, what makes that different. So that's, that's what's different there, just that they've had that stability with physicians and they've had enough that they've been able to keep it going without the physicians burning out. And was the second part of your question about Lytton or Lillooet? Yeah, Lytton. So in, in comparison, what does Lytton Health Services situation look like? They have a health center there, St. Bartholomew's Health Center. I don't know the hours for that. I believe it is staffed by locums who come into the community on a rotating basis. Oh. So Lytton is open 24 hours and the reason why we're able to open 24 hours is because we have a larger base of physicians to be able to offer services from. So, and the number of services and type of services 
are greater in that community and it also serves a wider, wider geographic region for the population. So there are a number of communities that are greater than what we serve here and the population itself is greater. When did Ashcroft become a limited, a limited services hospital? What were the reasons for the change? Um, in 2014, we were down to one physician here in Ashcroft. And so it simply was not sustainable to keep the emergency department going. Uh, obviously, we used to have a 24-7 emergency department here for, for quite a long time. So I think 2014 was really the low point. And since then, we have been fortunate in recruiting physicians here under the Practice Ready Assessment Program. They sign a three-year return of service contract, which means once they come to Ashcroft, they're here for three years. At the end of that time, they're, they're free to leave and go elsewhere. And so what's happened is we've been able to keep uh, two or three doctors here at a time, but then they rotate. So we get another one and then one leaves. At the moment, we're up to three physicians. And there is a fourth who is currently in the Practice Ready Assessment Program who is uh, earmarked to come to Ashcroft if they're successful, and that would be in the spring of 2020. So in 2015, we had um, problems recruiting physicians to the community. At one point, we were down to one and then no physicians living here. So at that time, we had to look, because in order to run a, a health care service, you need the physicians and nurses both. And so what we did was we moved to a model where we had the primary care physicians located here, and we were also able then to have um, the emergency open on the weekend. The goal of that was to have seven days a week an area in this community where people could receive service. So while the physicians were working on a Monday through Friday basis, we had um, either the physicians themselves or the locums come in to the hospital on the weekend to be able to provide service so that people had somewhere to go in community every day. Well, I'm not sure how you define a limited service hospital. Um, I certainly had my children at the Ashcroft Hospital and I've been in health uh, meetings where people actually say the day that we can uh, deliver babies in Ashcroft Hospital is the day when we have a hospital back. Uh, often, um, you know, when we, when we talk about services to the area, uh, I'm not sure that it's realistic to think that we could have surgery back at the Ashcroft Hospital or even deliver babies. Um, but certainly in an emergency situation, I think that it's critical that people have confidence that they can go to the site and uh, get the assistance that they need to ensure that whatever is happening, it, they have the ability to know that the expertise is there and that it's available to them. So what a full service site looks like for a rural community, I'm not sure what that looks like right now, but I think as a community, we're working very hard to try and define that. Um, so we're going to be talking about the hospital in Ashcroft and in interior health abroad. Now you're as an MLA, what is your current, um, er the, the area that you specifically look after? The area in my riding yeah. starts south of Hope, goes north of 70 Mile, goes over to Goldbridge and Braylorn outside of Lillooet, um, goes over just between Merritt and Princeton, over to Lac Lejeune in Kamloops, and all the way down through Manning Park to the U.S. border. So you have, this is so interior health area is largely your area as well. Yes, very much so. Uh, interior health is a little bit bigger, taking in the Kootenays also, but um, interior health is the authority that I work with in all the health sites throughout the riding, Perfect. except for Hope. Well, questions? Um, in your role as mayor and council member, uh, what is your actual involvement with Interior Health or and or the hospital? As a, a local government, we have very little to no control over health care in our community. That is not one of our mandates. It's a provincial matter, the same way that education is. 
Um, if, if when School District 74 decided to close Ashcroft Elementary School, there was nothing council could have done at the time to stop that. They could have voiced their, their thoughts and feelings on the matter, but that, that's it. So with interior health, I, I think the, the big role I see for, for municipal government in this discussion is to advocate. We have channels open to us, whether it's the Minister of Health, whether it's, it's people within Interior Health, that we can talk to, that we can advocate for our community, we can talk about the concerns and the challenges, um, what people are saying, what they want, how they're feeling, and we just need to keep on pushing away at it. We need to keep it on the front burner, we need to keep reminding Interior Health and the Ministry of Health that we're here, these are our challenges, what are you doing? How can we work together to, to address these problems? Because to me, that's a big thing. Uh, well, we did a heat alert response study. Uh, we were part of that last year, or earlier this year, with Interior Health. And one of the reasons Interior Health picked Ashcroft as the community to partner with is because they have a good relationship with Ashcroft. And we need to keep that good relationship going. We need to keep the relations good so that we can have that back and forth dialogue so that we're not feeling like we're butting heads all the time, that we feel that we are actually working together. Because as far as I see it, working together is how we are going to get things done.